Hello everyone, welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the sinking stone, which is a stonefly nymph pattern. And I haven't really tied any stonefly nymphs ever, so this was a little challenge for me, but I hope you like it. In the vise I have a size 10, this is the partridge check nymph hook. And this is a quite heavy wire hook and also with this nice continuous band. And this will help the fly get down quite deep. The bead is a 2.8 mm brass bead in the color gold. And to secure the bead and to add even more weight to the fly I'm going to take my lead free wire. This one is the 0.015. And here I'm going to put down exactly 9 turns. 9. So this is going to secure the bead. So I'm going to break off the end closest to the bead and then a tiny drop of glue and this is going to keep it all together and also going to really secure this and then I push up the wire inside the bead, break off the other end and then we can take a little more of this glue just a tiny drop and then I will move it around with the end of my dubbing brush so there we will have a nice smooth wire to work with. Then the first thread I'm going to be using is this Uni A dot in olive. And this fly that I will tie is going to be in, in an olive color, but you could also tie it in like a golden stone or black or brown. It really depends on the materials you have and what kind of stone fly you want to imitate. For the back material of this fly, I'm going to be using this Swiss straw in brown. And if, when you take it out of the package, it comes like this in a little quite not so wide strip. And then you can just unfold it, and it's going to be this quite translucent paper. And this one I've cut in two, and I'm going to cut it in two again. So we'll have a fourth of the width of this Swiss straw. And this is going to be exactly enough for this fly. And this is going to be the back material and also the thorax cover. And then what I will do is to fold this again as it was out of the package. And I'm going to fold the end. And then we're going to tie this in the whole length of the body. And we're right up to the lead free wire. And then I'm going to take this down, keeping it in the center or right up on the top of the fly. And then make sure it folds nicely. And here we're going to take this down a little bit down the band. I want to have a nice curve on the fly. For the body, I'm going to be using this Har dubbing from Hans. This one is in quite light olive color. And here at the back, I'm just going to build up a small dubbing ball and this is going to help the tails stick out and also help with the shape of the fly. What I usually do for my flies is to have them really well tapered going really small here at the back and then building up to the width of the bead but in this case the stone flies are a little more a little more heavy and not so tapered so there are put a little dubbing ball here at the back and then I'm going to take my goose bites and here I have them in an olive color so I'm going to take two off and then separate these two, take one and then I'm going to tie this in on my side here as the first tail and here we can see that this little dubbing ball is going to help this stick out a little bit to the side. And for now, I will just tie in the second one as well. And this one is going to be on your side or right on the opposite side. And then, as I did not do too many turns, I can pull these to length. And here, these are quite short. 
so just a few millimeters extending back and then I'm going to tie these down a little bit more and here we can really see that they are splaying out nicely and then I'm going to move the thread up the whole length of the body and when we reach this point we can then cut off the two bayets and then I'm going to tie these down right up to the wire and this is going to help with the transition between the body or the abdomen and the thorax then I'm going to tie in the rib on our way down and these are going to be two wires both in size small the first one in Chartreuse, this is the ultra wire from UTC and the other one I have from Uni their what's it called and the uni is called the soft wire it's about the same this one is in copper and then I'm going to align these two make sure that both ends are as aligned as you can and make sure they are straight as well this way it's going to be easier to tie in and I'm going to tie these in on my side and right up to the wire as well, this is going to help with the shape of the fly and so you won't have a bump right here and then I'm taking these down right to the tails and the last turn I'm going to do behind and this is only to cover up this little spot here and then I'm taking the olive hard dubbing again this time we're going to take a little bit more and do a quite, not a thick dubby noodle, but a little more consistent. And then one turn behind the wires. It's going to blend in everything nicely. And then taking this up, I'm going to put in a little bit of taper on this fly as well. but not going to be as visible as for my other flies and then we're going to take this up to about the wire and this wire here is going to give us the length of the thorax and on these stone flies the abdomen is going to be about the same length as the thorax so the thorax is a quite predominant part of these flies with the head as well, and the head in this case is going to be this uh, brass bead, so we have to take this into account as well. Then I'm going to take the Swiss draw over and then tie it down the whole length of the abdomen. This is going to make a nice little cover on this fly or back, and then I'm going to take the wires up in quite close open turns and this is going to really enhance the segmentation of the fly and help keep everything together and then once we reach the thread tie it off a few turns and here I like to take this up quite a bit and quite about the whole length of the thorax and then break this off and for now we're done with the abdomen or the body and also with this thread and now I'm going to change to the nano silk from Samplefly this one is the 80 knot really thin and in the color olive so I'm going to start this thread and also tie off the other one just make a few turns around it and then we can tie it in really easily and then I'm going to cut these two off at the same time and then take down the thread to where we left the thorax cover or the shell back or the backing material or swiss straw whatever you want to call it and here I'm going to just, we had here just a little bit of thread and I'm going to cover this by
folding it back and then a few turns of thread over it. And now we're going to build up the thorax and this is going to be a little thicker than the body and also with some legs made out of the same material as the tails. And the first thing to do is to build up a small dubbing ball here and this is going to help the legs stick out. And what I have here is the same brand of dubbing only in a little darker olive. And here you could use any color that you want or any dubbing that you want if you want to add a little more sparkle to it and make it more like an attractor pattern you could use some ice dub or any dubbing that you like really so here I'm building up a small or a little ball and this is going to as I said help with the legs then I'm taking the goose bites again and I'm doing exactly the same as for the tails it's going to be pretty much the same thing to do I take two and then Oh. And I forgot to mention one quite important thing with the tails is these bites, they have a natural bend or a curve to them and I want the curve to go out, splay out from the fly. So I'm going to tie this in with the curve going out first on my side. And here the length of this is going to be to about half point of the body for the first one. So we're here on my side and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And if you're happy with the length we can then do some heavier turns and bind these down right up to this little dubbing ball and just going to splay these out. Then cut off the excess. And if you want to we can do a few turns just to tidy down everything. And then I'm going to take this thorax cover over and to do this I'm using my dubbing needle and I'm going to fold it over the needle and this way we will have a nice little segment of this thorax cover instead of just doing it flat we're going to have some another dimension to this thorax cover so there we have the first one so just take it back a few millimeters and then fold it over and then a few turns up and then fold it over again fold it back I should say and then we're going to do the exact same thing once again so I'm taking my dark olive dubbing and I'm doing a small ball and then bring the thread right in front take your goose bites again First on my side, splaying out again, and this time we want this to be just slightly shorter than the first one. This is going to give a nice profile to the fly, doesn't really matter, but I like to have the legs being the longest at the back and then going forward, just getting a little bit shorter and shorter. I don't think the fish will really mind, but the fisherman maybe so I'm tying it this way so they're on the other side as well a few turns to secure it then cut off the ends a few more turns to tidy down and then we'll do exactly the same thing with this thorax cover so take your dummy needle or any fold it over then I'm holding everything with my left hand and then a few turns and there we have the second 
And I'm just going to pull this a little. It was just a little bit too long. And then bind it down. Take back the Swiss drawer again. Fold it back. Then a few turns. And then the last pair of legs are going to come in and do exactly the same thing. Just a little bit of dubbing. And then make sure to cover up all these bare thread here at the bottom. And then the last pair of legs. This is quite a repetitive process, but once you get a hang of it, it goes pretty fast and you can tie these down to really small sizes and these goose pirates are really not needed. You could also just use the dubbing and brush it out or use some spikier dubbing and this would work pretty much the same but it gives a nice appearance to the fly I think to have these goose pirates as legs. So one on my side and then same on the other side and these are going to be slightly shorter as well than the previous ones and here as we are up right to the bead these are going to fold back or the ends are going to fold back a little so just make sure that you get these out of the way and you really tie these down a few quite heavy turns and then we're going to cut off the ends on these ones as well and then for this last or these last turns of thread I'm going to put a little bit of dubbing as well and this is to cover up all messy stuff you may have made this way it will look nice on the underside and as I'm using this nano silk, I can really pull on it and it's going to almost disappear inside the dubbing and this is what I like on beadhead flies. And then the dubbing needle again. Fold the Swiss draw over it. Hold it with your left hand. And then tie it down. And here I'm going to pull this just a little bit, I think it's just a little bit too long. You want these segments to be about even in size. So there we go. And then I'm going to cut this off quite close. And here you don't have to worry if you have a little bit of this sticking out. We will put down a quite thick coat of varnish over it and this is going to bind everything together and hide all all thread or all stuff that maybe sticks out a little bit and then just do a normal whip finish and then cut off the thread so there we have the fly pretty much done and we can see legs splaying out nicely to the sides and then as the last little thing is you can also leave this out but I like to have a really secure fly especially when I'm fishing with bead heads I really like to have all the materials well secured this way you can fish these for a long time instead of having to change fly every other minute. So here I'm using some of the Sally Hansen's hard as nails and this one is a, a little old one and it has gotten quite thick and this is going to build up this thorax cover a little bit. So there we go and I'm going to take this down onto the back as well. And this is going to secure everything and 
and for now we have this sticking out a little bit but when it's going to dry it's going to soak down into the material a little bit and to make a nice quite shiny back also help it stay together when you fish it and I'm not going to leave you here see the varnish dry but here I have one that has dried and as you can see we still see the segments of the thorax cover it will soak down a little bit into it it's going to make this nice shiny back and also darken it a little bit so there we have the sinking stone thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you next time and happy tide